So that covers the zone level calculations of the ventilation rate procedure. Next, John will explain the system level calculations. This involves calculating the outdoor airflow brought in through the intake for the entire system and builds on zone calculations that Eric just reviewed. John? The ventilation rate procedure of Standard 62 defines three ventilation system configurations. Single zone, 100% outdoor air, and multiple zone recirculating systems. The procedure for calculating the system level outdoor air intake flow differs for each configuration. In a single zone system, one air handler serves the ventilation needs of one zone. All the outdoor air that enters through the intake is delivered to that single zone. Any recirculated air is merely return air from that same zone. Now some examples of single zone systems include package rooftop units, classroom unit ventilators, and maybe small single zone air handling units. In a 100% or dedicated outdoor air system, one air handler serves the ventilation needs of more than one zone. Outdoor air enters through the intake and is then delivered to the zones without mixing with any recirculated air. That is, the dedicated outdoor air unit delivers only outdoor air, not a mixture of outdoor and recirculated air. Local units then handle the cooling or heating loads within each zone. Now these local units might be fan coils, VRF terminals, wire source heat pumps, small DX split systems or rooftop units, chilled beams, sensible cooling terminal units, or even radiant ceiling panels. Now in a multiple zone recirculating system, one air handler serves the ventilation needs of more than one zone, but in this case, after the outdoor air enters through the intake, it mixes with recirculated air from the zones before being conditioned and delivered back to those same zones. The most common example is a conventional multiple zone VAV system using either a package rooftop unit, a floor by floor self-contained unit, or an air handling unit. Now to demonstrate the procedures for calculating system level intake flow, we'll use the example office floor plate that Eric introduced earlier. As he mentioned, for each of the three configurations, the system calculations build off the exact same zone calculations. Now Eric showed these calculations for the West Private Offices zone. And this table includes the zone outdoor airflow as calculated for the rest of the zones in this example. With the breathing zone airflows, V sub BZ, and then the zone outdoor airflows, V sub OZ, whether the system is delivering cool air or if hot air is delivered for heating. Starting with the single zone system, <laughs> since all the outdoor air enters through a single intake, it is then delivered to one zone, this calculation is pretty simple. According to standard 62, the required system intake flow, V sub OT, is equal to the corresponding zone outdoor air flow, V sub OZ. Now for our example, let's assume that a separate package rooftop unit serves the West private offices zone. So V sub OT equals 125 CFM in the cooling mode for the system serving this zone. And because E sub Z is less than one in the heating mode, the intake flow is higher, 156 CFM in this case. Now you might choose to set up the controls to always bring in the higher of these two air flows or you might adjust the outdoor damper set point based on if the system is presently cooling or heating mode. Or you could design the air distribution system for a higher value of E sub Z. Next, let's move on to the 100% outdoor air system. For this example, let's assume that a dedicated outdoor air unit delivers conditioned outdoor air directly to all the zones in the floor plate. Then a local terminal unit is located in each zone to provide cooling or heating. In this case, since the ventilation system delivers only outdoor air and no recirculated air, the required system intake flow, V sub OT, is equal to the sum of the zone outdoor air flows. So for our example, the intake flow for this dedicated outdoor air unit needs to be the sum of these zone outdoor air flows 
which equals 2017 CFM if E sub Z is 1. Or if E sub Z is 0 0.8, then the sum is 2,521 CFM. Now, similar to with the single zone system, you might choose to design the dedicated outdoor unit for the higher of these two airflows. Or you might add zone level dampers and adjust their flow set points between cooling and heating modes. Or you could deliver the conditioned outdoor air directly to the zone at a temperature no warmer than the zone so that E sub Z is always equal to 1. Now the third type of system, a multiple zone recirculating system, the calculation is a bit more challenging. For our example, let's assume that one VAV air handling unit serves all the zones on this floor. Each zone has a VAV terminal to vary the airflow or reheat to maintain zone temperature. In this type of ventilation system, the primary air leaving the air handler is a mixture of outdoor air and air that has been recirculated from all the zones. Every zone receives the same fraction or percentage of outdoor air. As a result, while the critical zone, that's the zone that requires the highest percentage of outdoor air, when it's properly ventilated, the other zones served by the system will be overventilated. Therefore, the air that returns from these non-critical zones contains some unused or excess outdoor air. Now, most of this unused outdoor air recirculates. That's good and the calculations in standard 62 give you credit for this unused air. But some of this unused outdoor air leaves the building as exhaust or relief air. In other words, some outdoor air enters the system intake, passes through these non-critical zones, then leaves the building without using up its full diluting potential. To account for this, standard 62 requires the designer to determine a system ventilation efficiency or E sub V, when calculating the intake airflow for this type of ventilation system. So there are three steps to determine the required system level intake flow for a multiple zone recirculating system. The first step is to calculate the uncorrected outdoor air intake flow, V sub OU. The next step is to determine the system ventilation efficiency. And the third step is to calculate the design outdoor air intake flow V sub OT. Now for step one, notice that the equation for V sub OU is basically the sum of the breathing zone ventilation rates that Eric described, with the exception of this factor D. The D stands for occupant diversity ratio, and it's multiplied by the people-based component of the ventilation rate. And mathematically, it's the ratio of the expected design system population divided by the sum of the design populations for all the zones served by this system. For any system that serves multiple zones, we know that all zones will typically not be simultaneously occupied at their design population. For example, in our office building, a person is expected to either be in their office or cubicle or attending a meeting in one of the conference rooms, not in both zones at the same time. This diversity can be accounted for with designing a multiple zone recirculating system. For our example, when we sum the design population for each zone, P sub Z, we get 152 people. However, the design team estimates that the largest number of people expected to occupy this floor is 102 people. This is the design system population, P sub S, as defined by the standard. So, our occupant diversity ratio is calculated to be 0 0.67. In solving the equation for V sub OU, the uncorrected outdoor air intake flow for this ventilation system is 1,767 CFM. This uncorrected intake flow would be the required flow rate if this system was 100% efficient at delivering the required outdoor air flow from the intake to every breathing zone. But as mentioned, that's not the case. So the next step is to determine the system ventilation efficiency. 
The standard includes two methods for determining E sub V. You can either use a new simplified procedure or use the alternative procedure outlined in Appendix A. Beginning with the 2019 version of the standard, this new simplified procedure replaced the lookup table that was used in previous versions. The simplified procedure is, well, simple, so it takes less time than the calculation intensive alternative procedure. However, the alternative approach might result in a higher efficiency and lower intake flow in some cases. So in those times, it may be worth the effort. Now when using the new simplified procedure, calculation of system ventilation efficiency is simply a function of the occupant diversity ratio. If D is less than 0.6, E sub V is calculating using this equation. But if D is greater than or equal to 0.6, then E sub V is equal to 0.75. Now this chart is just a graphical depiction of those two equations from the standard. The x-axis is the occupant diversity ratio, and the y-axis is system ventilation efficiency. Again, if D is less than 0.6, E sub V is calculating use this equation. And if D of 0.6 or higher, then E sub V is equal to 0.75. In our example, remember, we calculated the occupant diversity ratio to be 0.67, so system ventilation efficiency is then 0.75. As I mentioned, the standard also includes an alternative procedure for calculating system ventilation efficiency, and this is found in Appendix A. We're not going to walk through that alternative procedure during today's program, so I've included resources in the bibliography in case you're interested. So then the final step for a multiple zone recircling system is to calculate the design outdoor air intake flow V sub OT. The equation for this is the uncorrected outdoor air intake flow, which we calculated earlier to be 1,767 CFM for our example, divided by the system ventilation efficiency, which in our case is 0.75. So the design outdoor air intake for our example system is 2,356 CFM. Now that is in order to deliver the required outdoor air flow to every breathing zone in this office floor plate, standard 62 requires bringing in 2,356 CFM at the central air handler intake. Now for those of you familiar with previous calculation methods in the standard, Note that this new simplified method does not require separate calculations for cooling versus heating mode. Remember that E sub V is now only a function of the occupant diversity ratio. So the calculated intake flow does not depend on any factor that changes between cooling and heating modes. But there is one caveat here. In order to use a simplified procedure, the minimum primary airflow for each zone must be no lower than 1.5 times the zone outdoor airflow. If minimum primary airflows are to be below this threshold, then the alternative procedure in Appendix A should be used. Now to demonstrate, assuming an E sub Z of 1.0 in cooling mode, V sub OZ for the West Private Offices zone in our example is 125 CFM. So when occupied, the minimum primary airflow delivered to that zone must be no lower than 187 CFM. And in heating mode, assuming an E sub Z of 0.8, primary airflow must be no lower than 233 CFM when delivered warm to this zone. Now you might choose to set up the VAV controller so its minimum primary airflow set point is the higher of these two values. Or you could set it up with two different minimum airflow set points, one for cooling and one for heating. Now, on this topic of VAV minimum airflows, to correspond with this new simplified procedure in standard 62, ASHRAE standard 90.1 was also revised. Shown here is the section of that standard which prevents reheating air that has been previously cooled. 
unless the zone controls first reduce airflow to prescribed minimum thresholds. Exception 2A used to require the airflow be reduced to 20% of the zone's design supply airflow rate, but this has now been changed to only require reducing the airflow to the minimum primary airflow rate required by the simplified procedure in standard 62.1, which as we saw is 1.5 times the zone outdoor airflow. So the new simplified procedure in standard 62 makes it easier to calculate the design intake flow for a multiple zone VAV system. And this change to standard 90.1 makes it easier for the VAV box controls to be set up to comply with both standards.